Oxford, Mississippi on a December Saturday afternoon. Time for a little college basketball as Ole Miss welcomes Illinois State to the Pavilion. Two teams looking for an important non-conference win alongside former Illinois shooting guard Sean Harrington. I'm Richard Cross, glad to have you along. This Ole Miss team at 5-4, and four, Sean, is led by its backcourt. And they have a lot of firepower and they can score in bunches and really hurt you from the perimeter. Scoring's not a problem, and you can you like to see some defense along with this scoring firepower. DeAndre Burnett led Ole Miss in scoring a year ago. He's coming off the bench this afternoon. For Illinois State, they've got a guard that can hurt you in Keyshawn Evans, averaging almost 19 points per game, but it's their front court that kind of leads the way. Yeah, Phil Fain and Malik Yarbrough, very important in this ball game because they can give you that scoring punch inside, not only around the basket, but also around the perimeter, which makes it a difficult matchup for Ole Miss. It'll be fun to see the chess match back and forth between Offensive defense. Yarbrough coming off a monster game against Murray State where he had 30 points. Doug Shouse tosses the ball into the air. Ole Miss controls the opening tip. Glad to be with you for a little college basketball at Oxford, Mississippi. Inside to Bruce Stevens, who started the last three games. Ole Miss scores in the paint early. We talk about the guard firepower. Course is a big that scores the first bucket. But Bruce Stevens is really important to this Ole Miss team. Andy Kennedy would love to see him to continue to give some of that scoring production that he's done the last couple games. Evans tries a three from the wing, rims out. Tipped away and touched last by Illinois State. Evans, Williams, Reniga, Yarbrough, and Fain in the starting lineup for the Redbirds. One of our officials getting his whistle squared away. Doug Shouse, Byron Jarrett, KB Burdett, the guys in the striped shirts this afternoon. Ole Miss 5-4. They snapped a three-game losing skid with a win on Sam Houston State earlier this week. Illinois State finals this past week. They haven't played since last Saturday, lost two in a row. Rebounding going to be another important key to this ball game. Illinois State comes in minus 10 on the glass. A really important to hold Ole Miss to one and done situation. Aaron Davis drives. Offensive rebound by Marcanvis Hyman. He's fouled in his free throws coming up. Malik Yarbrough is first foul. Dan Muller in his sixth season as the head coach of Illinois State. 108 wins, 71 losses, and the reigning Missouri Valley Conference Coach of the Year. He's done a terrific job at Illinois State over those five-plus seasons. The 108 victories is the most of any state school in Illinois, so they're very proud of that. A lot of consistency from this Redbird team since Muller's been there. Was that hard to say out loud? It, it uh, was hard uh, to say. Of any school in the state of Illinois. Four nothing. Couple of free throws from Mark Canvas Hyman, who shoots only 35% from the strike. Ole Miss is going to mix things up on the defensive end. Drop into a 2-3 zone. Good feed down low, high low. Phil Fain on the basket. Yarbrough playing the four, but when your four man can put it down on the deck like that and find the open man, it's a huge bonus. Feet inside, Bruce Stevens has it blocked at the rim by Fain. Ole Miss keeps the possession. Stevens into the lane, he's got four points early for Ole Miss. And Ole Miss going inside early. This is a team that relies heavily on the guards, looking to get some production inside. Good job by Bruce Stevens. There's a foul on Terrence Davis, eyeing the steal. Got a bump on Madison Williams. This is big to big for Illinois State. Good job getting inside the zone. Makes the defense help uphill. Yarbrough finds his partner down low. Good finish by Fain on the inside. Taylor Brunega goes to the bench for Illinois State. Williams with a three, and he got it from the wing. 
Really good attacking the zone. That's that 1-3-1 one, one zone. Get the ball moving side to side and quickly. Good ball reversal. Winds up being an open shot for Williams. Inside, Markel Crawford off the window. Good job finding the cutter that time. Illinois State doubling the post. Weak side needs to help and rotate over. Madison Williams going to try another three, and he's off the mark this time. Terrence Davis rebound. Three and Tyree found a lane. little Euro step, but he missed the layup. Yarbrough goes coast to coast for the rim. And again, showing his versatility. That's a four-man going the coast to coast. But he can do that on the season. It's a terrific job handling the basketball and also getting others involved. Leak Yarbrough, 6'6", 230. Good handles. Hyman overshot it, but he's fouled. Good handles here from the big man going in, taking a little contact as well, finishing at the rim. That's a 6'6 frame. They can handle the basketball, does a good job. See the assist there, over four a game. An assist to turnover ratio of over 1.2. I think he's more likely to get the and one there if he's 6'2 instead of 6'6. Six, six. Yeah, you see that size going in there, you're not going to give him the call. One point game, Ole Miss with the lead. Mark Canvas Hyman. Three double doubles in his career. Makes one of two. Hyman goes to the bench. Eustace Fermanomichus for Ole Miss into the game for the first time, a senior from Lithuania. Is that 1-3-1 one, one after a made basket or a dead ball situation? Arbo nearly traveled, got it off to Williams. Evans with a good clean look, and he got the three. Great inside-out action. Again, ball movement against the 1-3-1 one, one zone is opening up the three-point opportunities for Illinois State. That times Williams finds Evans. Evans has been lights out from three in the early going this season. First lead of the game for Illinois State, and then a turnover by Ole Miss. Outlet pass. Evans trying to run it down. Williams for three. Got another one. And a four-point lead for the Redbirds. Got to feel good for Madison Williams. Last year, one for 19 from the three-point line. He worked on that shot over the summer. Comes in the game shooting over 40%. He's knocked down two already here this afternoon. Markel Crawford from distance. No, but an offensive well, taken away by Williams. Rhea Tyree trying to pull it down. Evans in transition. Fouled on the shot. And he's got three free throws coming up after this official's timeout. On the April 7, 2015, Torrey Ward tragically died in a plane crash returning from the Final Four. He played at UAB, was an assistant coach at Ole Miss and Illinois State. His mom and family members are here in Oxford today, and we honor the memory of the late Torrey Ward. A 6-0 run for Illinois State has given them a four-point lead over Ole Miss, 13-9 with 15-29 to play. In half number one, glad to have you back at the Pavilion in Oxford, Mississippi on this Saturday afternoon alongside Sean Harrington. I'm Richard Cross. Could be an important game for both of these two teams from a non-conference standpoint. Not a lot of non-conference opportunities remaining. And Sean, both of these teams a year ago, right there on the bubble, left out of the NCAA tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Just missed the NCAA tournament. So you got to pick up quality wins in your non-conference. And this is an opportunity for both of these teams to get a little bit of momentum going into their conference season. This would be a good win on the resume as both teams have a chance to finish high up in their respective conferences. Especially disappointing a year ago for Dan Muller's Illinois State team. Had a really nice year. Won 28 games overall, went 17 and one in the Missouri Valley Conference. That one loss was to Wichita State during the regular season, and then they lost to Wichita in the conference championship game there in St. Louis, and they were left to play in the NIT. Really got a rough draw last year, being left out. Did everything you can really ask. Almost ran the table in conference play. Got to the championship game of your conference tournament. Good RPI. 
Keyshawn Evans makes two of three. The lead is now six for the Redbirds of Illinois State. DeAndre Burnett into the game for Ole Miss. Started the season coming off the bench, then started three of five games. But the last two, he's been back on the bench as Ole Miss has brought Bruce Stevens into the lineup. Burnett for three. Missed everything. And Illinois State gets it back. Andy Kennedy, 12th season as the head coach at Ole Miss. Winningest coach in school history. Couple of trips to the NCAA tournament during his tenure. Doing a terrific job here. 20 plus wins in nine of those 11 seasons. Tinsley off the mark with the three. It's been a struggle from distance for Tinsley this year, shooting just 20% from behind the arc. Dante Schuler missed and then called for a foul, his first. So far, it's been good defense from the Redbirds. No open looks right now for Ole Miss. Everything's a contested jumper. And if you watch a Dan Muller team, you're going to hear a lot of contest every shot. No open looks, and that's been the case in the early going so far this afternoon. No easy ones for Ole Miss. Yarbrough crosses over, gets into the lane, and is able to get a friendly roll. Went by Dominic Olenicek. That's a tough matchup for Ole Miss. Yarbrough can really put it on the floor and get to the basket. Tough matchup. We saw a little senior move there from Markel Crawford. Caught the ball with Yarbrough guarding him closely. Went right at Yarbrough, who picks up his second foul. He knows it too. That's a big foul in this ball game. Yarbrough playing extremely well. Nearly two and a half minute scoring drought for Ole Miss as Illinois State has been on a 10-0 run. And the Rebels turn it over as Schuler's forced out on the inline. There's a lot of energy on that Redbird sideline right now. Guys flying around defensively and that, that turnover, the entire bench up on their feet, enjoying the effort. Elijah Clarence into the game for Illinois State today. He's got the ball, goes inside. Missed the layup, little contact there. It's a big deal, though, to have him back in the lineup for Illinois State. Shot for Matt Hine off the mark. Clarence had a stress fracture in his foot that caused him to miss the first five games of the year. He's missed the last four games with a nasty blister on his foot. Arvanovich just has it knocked away. Tonight at 8.30 Eastern, we'll take you to Columbia, Missouri, as the Tigers square off against UNF. It's right here on the SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Missouri kind of weathering the storm of losing Michael Porter Jr. Played less than two minutes in the season opener. Number one recruit in the country, but Tigers played well under first-year head coach Conzo Martin. Yeah, Conzo Martin doing a great job there. We all miss out on the injury to Michael Porter Jr. It's been a lot of fun watching him all season. and It's a tough injury early on in his career. Phil Fain picks up the foul, and that's an interesting development early in this game. We talked about it right off the top. Perhaps the way Illinois State has success is with their front court. But now Phil Fain and Malik Yarbrough both have two fouls with 13 minutes left in the first half. A long way to go here in this first half. You have to have both of them out in the ball game. A lot of coaches like to keep guys out in the first half when they pick up two. I don't know if you're going to be able to keep both of these guys on the bench for 13 plus minutes here to close out the first half. Interesting to watch Dan Muller try to get those guys in, maybe spy them two or three minutes at a time and get them out before they pick up fouls. But those two have to be smart as well. They get back in that ball game. You can't pick up a ticky tack foul. Evans pulls up just inside the three-point line. Good look there from Evans, who's got seven. Production from Evans has just been terrific over the last three years. The improvement went from one point a game to almost six and then over 18 this year. 
Terrence Davis into the lane. And a shot altered there by Brunica. I like the attack from Davis. Sometimes he settles a little too much for three. Just didn't get that one to fall. How about that look from William Tinsley? Hits a three, and it's a 12-point advantage for the Illinois State Redbirds. Four of seven from behind the arc in the early part of this ball game. Uh, threes have definitely been the distance, so the difference so far for Illinois State. They are hot from the outside and shooting with a lot of confidence. That's the way you build up a 12-point lead. Hensley shooting just 20% from behind the arc on the season. He's got a good looking shot though. Absolutely, that's a contested three. And you can see the, the trio for Illinois State. There's a lot of firepower there. Two of those guys sitting on the bench right now with two fouls. So Tinsley picking up the slack, knocking down that last three with Bain and Yarbrough both with two fouls early in this first half. And look at that, 21 years. How far you got to go back to find a trio in the Missouri Valley that's scoring over 50 per game. Illinois State shooting 62% in the early going of this game. They fall into a zone. And Ole Miss turns it over. Terrence Davis threw it right between Bruce Stevens and DeAndre Burnett. And Ole Miss is out of sorts right now, just not on the same page. Early on in the ball game, they went into Stevens. Stevens was able to get a couple easy baskets early. Illinois State switched to the zone, and it's been a pressure zone. And Ole Miss just has not been able to attack it. First turnover of the game by Illinois State. Keyshawn Evans calling for the carry. Against his zone now, Ole Miss wants to try to see if they can get somebody into the middle of that zone and then look opposite. Get some penetration or a pass inside that lane and then kick out to an open shooter. Another turnover by Ole Miss. Hyman trying to kick it into the corner to Burnett. After last season when Illinois State missed the tournament, an SOS tweet from Dan Muller. A 12-point lead for Illinois State over Ole Miss. 11.47 to go in the first half from the Pavilion. Wasn't necessarily a distress call SOS, but maybe an SOS strength of schedule tweet from Dan Muller. This was the original tweet after Illinois State didn't get into the big dance. He calls to the Power Five leagues. He says, it's me again looking for a home and home next year. Please call me for a chance for quality road win, top 33 RPI. Would it work? Well, it did, and that's why we're playing today. Ross Bjork, the athletics director at Ole Miss, responded, said Andy Kennedy doesn't do Twitter, but he said call us and we'll set it up, and that's how this game came to be. Yeah, scheduling's hard. Coaches don't like to schedule, and it's hard to get matchups. This is the new era, the new wave of getting a game based off of Twitter. And the bitmoji to boot there for uh, Dan Miller. So Ross Bjork, key in uh, scheduling this matchup. Next year, Ole Miss will go to normal and will play Illinois State in the return game. There was obviously the connection there between Andy Kennedy and Dan Muller through the former assistant, Tory Ward, who we mentioned earlier passed away after the 2015 season in a plane crash. So some relationships there. There was only one other team that reached out to Illinois State. It was Arizona State. They had one date available in their schedule. Didn't work for the Redbirds. And so a road trip to the SEC this year for Illinois State. You've always heard how hard it is to schedule games. Maybe it's just no, no social assistant. Media. Yeah, no assistant wants that task of uh, scheduling games. And Strong move to the rim there by Taylor Brunega. His first points, and the lead is now 14 for Illinois State. Canvas Hyman to the rim and off the glass. Much better possession for Ole Miss against that zone. Getting the ball into the middle of the lane. Hyman able to finish at the rim. Yarbrough now back in this ball game, has those two fouls. It'll be really important for him to be smart, not to pick up a cheap one. Yarbrough drives in, takes it to the rim, shot rims out. On his own rebound, finds Evans for three. Got another one. 
an excellent pass from Yarbrough to the outside. He got the offensive rebound, didn't panic, kicked out to a shooter. That's the best time to shoot a three off. An offensive rebound and your feet going into the shot. Evans steps in with confidence. Ole Miss for three. There's Bree and Tyree with an answer. Back-to-back -back possessions for Ole Miss with points on the board after going nearly six minutes without scoring. That's a big answer from Bree and Tyree. Illinois State on fire on the offensive end. Ole Miss needs to keep up. Yarbrough into the lane. He's blocked, had it taken away, but a foul on Mark Canvas Hyman. Evans able to step into his shot. Terrific three-point shooter from the outside, almost 50% on the year. And then the answer on the other end against that zone. Brian Tyree knocks it down with some confidence. A weak Yarbrough at the line, shoots 77%. Throw a guy 6'6", so good size, but not one of those that you think of as, okay, he's going to swat shots all over the place. He's got a 7-foot, 2-inch wingspan. It's just like you, right? Absolutely. And he uses that well when we talk about it. Can get inside, get some rebounds, but also his passing ability is really good. He uses those arms maybe to reach around defender or get a pass over the top of somebody to find a teammate. Terrific feel on the offensive end passing. Helps when you have that 7-2 wingspan. Tyree gets into the lane and he's bumped on the drive. Elijah Clarence picks up the foul. It's the fifth team foul on Illinois State. Redbirds lead it by 14 with 10.03 to play in the first half. Davis floater on the baseline. And Ole Miss settling in a little bit more on that offensive end now. Back to back, good possessions that time. Four different guys touch it on the floor. Ball goes inside and out, reversal. And then a good touch from Davis on the runner. Yarbrough dumped it off, and Illinois State turns it over. So you like the ball movement that leads to a good shot? Yeah, you get a lot of guys involved. Everybody touches. Ball goes inside, out, reversal of the floor. Makes the defense move, so the help's not there on the baseline when Davis drives. And good body control by Davis to knock down the runner. Crawford, deep three. Crawford had four threes in the game on Tuesday night against Sam Houston State. Tipped in. Yarbrough active down low. A little bit of a loose ball there. Just kind of got tossed up in the air. And Yarbrough tips it in. Got that 7-2 wingspan. He used it right there to go get the ball above everybody else. Kyrie gets an offensive rebound. Shortest guy down there comes away with it. Terrence Davis fires a three. Ole Miss one of six from behind the arc. Fain fouled inside. On Wednesday at 7 Eastern, we'll take you to Gainesville for number 22, Florida. Squaring off against the James Madison Dukes. Mike White and company looking for a win at home. It's right here on the SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. And Muller not at all scared away by the two fouls from his two forwards, Yarbrough and Thane on the floor at the same time. <laughs> They're going to get Yarbrough out here. So, really good job. Dan Muller finds some minutes. Started off with Yarbrough, then brought in Thane a little bit after that, and I take him out. Try to see if they can get some quick subs back and forth. Get those guys a few minutes, keep them fresh, keep them involved in this ball game, but also try to not pick up the third foul. And now Fain will come out as well on the defensive end, so they don't pick up a defensive foul. 15-point lead for Illinois State. Redbirds have never lost to Ole Miss. This is the fourth meeting all time. 
got a 3-0 lead in the series. Offside rebound there to Matt Hine. Evans in transition. Sure, that's the shot that his head coach wanted. Now DeAndre Burnett tries one. Hine comes up with the loose ball. And both teams with some quick threes in transition. And yeah, Muller will tell him, let's slow it down a little bit. Get back into that offense. Baseline drive by Clarence. Partially blocked. Ole Miss comes away. Markel Crawford bumped on the drive by Tinsley. So good start for Illinois State. A lot of it. Malik Yarbrough using that wingspan to tip it in. 15-point lead. Time now for another fast break. Can you give me an impersonation of AK? What are you doing? All right, do you like the plaid jacket that he wears or the normal suits that he wears? Normal suits, the plaid gotta go. Uh, <laughs> favorite emoji? Um, wave, the wave, wavy. All right, that's Ben, fast break. I don't know about that emoji. No plaid jacket today from Andy Kennedy, but a 15-point lead for Illinois State. DeAndre Burnett, rest of those guards gotta step things up. Yeah, absolutely, they've done well all season scoring the basketball. But right now, no points for Burnett as a senior. You need to step up, make some plays for your teammates to get everybody involved. It can also be assists for Burnett. He does a good job distributing the basketball. He does have two assists, no turnovers here this afternoon. As a team, Ole Miss has turned it over four times. The Rebels shooting just 32% in this game. Down low. Crawford's shot won't go, it's tipped away, and will stay on the offensive end for the Rebels. Nothing coming easy right now for Andy Kennedy and the Rebels. Everything's been contested. Tyree, open look at three. Kinsley pulls down the board. Ole Miss now one of nine from behind the arc. Evans took a shot in the face, still made the three. What a game so far for Keyshawn Evans. 13. And he's playing with a lot of confidence. That is a dribble drive pull up. Shooting in rhythm. Schuler tries a three, can't get it to go. Tipped out to Tyree from the elbow. Got a bucket. Tyree's now got five. More hoops coming your way tonight. Columbia, Missouri. The North Florida Ospreys and the Missouri Tigers. Conzo Martins Club looking for a win at home. 8.30 Eastern on the SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Delay of game warning for Illinois. Well, I guess it's on Ole Miss. Ball knocked away after the made basket. Dan Muller now continues to bring in Fain and Yarbrough here on the offensive end. See how long he keeps those two. Again, both playing with two fouls since about the 13-minute mark. Out the basket and one for DeAndre Burnett. Ole Miss turns defense into offense. He's struggling on the offensive end one way. Get out and tra transition. We just mentioned. Andre Burton, get it going offensively. Good job here attacking, getting the contact. Opportunity for a three-point play. That's your senior guard stepping up, making the play when your team needs it. Burnett nearly automatic from the free throw line. Shoots 87%. That three-point play makes it a 13-point game. Now Old Miss has to lock in on this defensive end. 
Yarbrough baseline drive. Offensive rebound for Fame. And banks it in with the left hand. Great job by Fame being active around the rim. Yarbrough drew all the traffic on the drive. Left lane open, finishes with the left hand. Burnett tries a deep three straight on. And it's about halfway down, kicked out. Ole Miss one of 11 from behind the arc. And some of these are good looks. That was a good look, good shot. Just couldn't finish it. Yarbrough probably should have gotten a foul on the drive. Missed the shot, but an offensive rebound and put back. Works out well for Illinois State. This Redbird team is playing with a lot of energy right now, flying around. Long two that time for DeAndre Burnett. Burnett good job keeping Ole Miss in his striking distance. Line cutter knocked away, but Illinois State ends up with it. Back out to Yarbrough for three. Tipped by Ole Miss, and Illinois State will keep it. This was Fane inside. Attacking that offensive glass, giving his team a second chance opportunity. Ole Miss fans thought that Yarbrough might have touched that ball just before it went out of bounds on the sideline, but Illinois State keeps the possession. Crawford into the lane, all the way to the rim. And Muller immediately takes a timeout. He wanted the foul on the other end. There's no question, Fane got hit across the arm, but it leads to a break. Good job by Crawford finishing at the rim. Jimmy Dykes, Antoine Walker, Peter Burns coming up at half. We'll show you a hard breakdown in Baton Rouge and the Cats tussling with the Hokies. What are we seeing down in Oxford right now, Antoine? Got to do a better job of defending three-point line. You know, Ole Miss has given up six three-pointers mm -hmm. already. And Ole Miss better make some threes. They're one out of 11, and, and that's who they are. They're yeah. going to shoot 20, 25 a game. they got to make some. Back to the pavilion, Richard and Sean. Thanks a lot, Peter Burns. 13-point game, 39-26. Illinois State with the lead, 4-16 until the half. You look at the SEC right now. Tough loss earlier today for LSU. you got four teams in the top 25. Kentucky at number eight, struggling, hoping to come out with a win against Virginia Tech. A&M, really, really good. The Tennessee Vols, seven and one, and they've got a massive opportunity game tomorrow at home against North Carolina. Yeah, a lot of really good wins out of conference for the SEC so far this year. And you just mentioned that Tennessee can make a huge statement against North Carolina tomorrow. But the league is definitely up this year, and it's the middle and the lower teams as well that have improved their ball game. No easy nights in the SEC right now. Talked to Andy Kennedy earlier today about kind of the SEC overall. He said he thinks it's the deepest that it's been in the 12 years that he's been at Ole Miss. Yeah, and just talking about he said the bottom half or the middle pack, every night's going to be difficult, and they can make a statement this year. Texas A&M got a chance to watch them quite a bit early in this season. They are playing terrific inside and out. Definitely a team that can make a Final Four push this year. Pretty good combination in the front court there at College Station. Ole Miss comes up with a steal. Rebels trying to cut into 13-point lead for Illinois State. Edwards back into that zone. Burnett all the way. He's blocked inside. Good work there on at the rim by Brunega. And a turnover by the Redbirds. You gotta take care of the basketball if you're Illinois State. You've played a terrific half. It's the unforced turnovers that you just can't have right now. You want to keep playing with pace because that's what's built the lead for you, but don't force it when it's not there. Barnett missed the three. Bill Fane, though, comes down with a rebound and steps on the end line. Kind of an unforced error to borrow a tennis term. Ah. 
Can't fault the guy for going up and grabbing the board. Just momentum took him out of bounds. Four turnovers and four possessions for Illinois State. They're just trying to take advantage. Burnett on the drive, dumps it off. Bruce Stevens. That's a high percentage shot. Terrific job from Burton getting into the lane, drawing the help uphill from the defense. And Stevens wide open on the backside. Easy flush. Markel Crawford pulls down the Evans miss. Good contest on that Evans jump shot. Tyree gets inside, ball spins out. Offensive rebound. Another one, Tyree pulls it down. Burnett got a three. It was a matter of time before they start falling. It was a second, third chance opportunity. Now he lets the crowd get back into it. They've been quiet most of the first half. Eight point game after the three from Burnett. Evans trying to answer. Standing on the end line, it's Ole Miss basketball. Yarbrough coming back into the game, Andy Kennedy. Certainly not smiling right now, but his team making a run. Definitely taking the momentum here. And it's Ben. On the defensive end, good job getting stopped, and that's led to the run here. What was a 17-point lead for Illinois State. Brian Tyree limping off the floor. Just take him straight to the locker room with 2.24 to play into the half. Rebels on a 9-0 run over the last two minutes. That's gotten hot here on this end. Not only shooting basketball, but getting his teammates involved. Madison Williams picks up a foul about 40 feet from the basket. And now DeAndre Burnett goes to the free throw line with a one and one. fouls in this first half that Illinois State can point to that that you, you, you just can't do that. You had the one with Yarbrough over on the sideline on Crawford and this one by Madison Williams leads to a couple of points for DeAndre Burnett. And for Yarbrough obviously is a huge one because gave him two fouls and they had to play the game of subbing him in and out for the last 13 minutes and this one leads to free throws two points Momentum on all this side. Bain inside, fouled, headed to the rim. Markel Crawford picks up his first foul. A couple of free throws coming up here for Phil Fain. Fain missed the Murray State game for Illinois State. His grandfather passed away and had gone home for the funeral, rejoins the team. And certainly Dan Muller glad to have him back in the lineup. And he's just such a consistent player, an important player for this Illinois State team. Fain has scored 13 or more in every game this year. And he's had two or more offensive rebounds in every single game this year. So he brings that consistency to a young team. It's a huge part of this offense. Only returning starter from a year ago. The Illinois State team that set a school record with 28 wins. And Bird's extending the defense. Burnett. That's deep. It's a deep three there. Inside. High percentage shot there for Fain. Again, Yarbrough pushing the basketball, feeding his buddy Fain inside. Schuler missed a long three. Ole Miss two. 
A 14 from behind the arc. You just got to know time score momentum sometimes when you take those threes. That's not a bad look, but considering that Illinois State has kind of grabbed momentum again, they just cut it down to six. Want to take a good shot in rhythm. Yarbrough works inside, then turned it over. Minute to play in the first half. Burnett from straight on, missed the front iron. I misspoke a minute ago, Ole Miss now 2 of 16 from behind the arc in the first half. A lot of your offense comes from behind the three. Difficult to stay in a ball game with that kind of shooting. Yarbrough. Missed the shot, Ole Miss comes down with a rebound. And Muller for Illinois State wanted a foul. Schuler goes coast to coast, missed the shot, and now Illinois State can play for the last shot of the half. Fine dumps it off to Fain, overshot it. Two seconds remaining in the half. That's where Ole Miss needs to learn from that. Schuler takes it in one on three. You have a chance for the last shot of the half. Instead, it leads to Illinois State getting the ball back. And now they got two seconds, ball underneath. Try to make a play before the half. Lob in, Yarbrough, high off the glass. Illinois State does not get the foul call, but they do get a 10-point lead going into the break. 43-33, the Redbirds trying to win on the road in the SEC. Let's go to the studio with Peter Burns. Hi, thank you, Richard. 43-33, Antoine Walker, Jimmy Dykes, Peter Burns. Hi, hello, happy holidays to you. Uh, not happy holidays to the Rebels right now. Uh, they scheduled this game against <laughs> Illinois State. Uh, if you're Coach Kennedy and you're there in half, you've been in this position before, Coach, yeah. what do you t how are you getting offense here in the second half? Well, they, they, they kind of are who they are, Peter, from the standpoint. Ole Miss, their top five guys in terms of shots taken, over half of their shots are threes. They are a guard-oriented team as much yeah. as we have in the league right now. So the three ball's not falling for them. Two of 16. Yeah, so, so Andy's got to set these guys down and say, listen, we've taken some quick transition threes that we don't need to take right now. We... If we have any advantage at all in this game, surely one of our five guards on the floor can drive the dadgum basketball and make something good happen and get ourselves to the free throw line because Ole Miss has only been there nine times in the first half. Yep. They've got to do something different, though, in the second half. Well, you got to think Illinois State's played zone most of the first half, too, to kind yep. of force, these, force them to shoot three-point shots. But um, Burnett is the guy you got you to put it on. He's the senior. He's the leader on this team. He has to make sure that they get quality shots. Picked it up late in the second half and then started to be a little bit more aggressive. But the guard players, where is that? Those guys should be more dominant yeah. um, as far as getting good shots. Davis gets up two fouls, so he's not able to play towards the end of the second half. So those are some things they got to think about going into the second half. How do we get easy opportunities? Yeah. And as they can figure that out, get out on the break, maybe have to press a little bit more. This is a team that's small now. You don't have that big guy in the middle. So yeah. you, Maybe you press a little bit more to try to get, create some turnovers. See if they have the energy to do it, too. Fourth game in nine days for the Rebels. Another team that was in action earlier is Big Blue Nation taking on Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech led by six at the half. So we're going to go straight to the second half. Coach Cal looking at his team. Wildcats trying to fight back. Kentucky up them by four. Kentucky swinging around. Hey, there's a three-point ball, Antoine. <laughs> Great ball movement, get double team, get, make the hockey pass over, and taking the shot, that's what that's more important. Now, we don't see a Kentucky team that takes a lot of three-point shots. Oh, that's, uh, that's a good pass over to Kevin Knox for the lay-in. Kentucky up five. Virginia Tech, though, would answer Ahmad Hill from NBA to land. Drains the three. Virginia Tech cuts it 85-83, but under a minute to play, Diallo gets it done. Well, uh, Diallo, he came into this ball game only out of six out of 19 from the three-point line. He was four out of seven today. But you look at that last shot that he took. His shot is really good. And I think the more confident he gets, the more threes you're going to see him take and this Kentucky team take. I've said it all, get, all day long. Kentucky came in this game, guys, only making four threes per game. Crazy. So this league is going to shrink the court defensively and say, okay, can you make enough shots to beat us and win the SEC championship. They sent a message today against Virginia Tech, yes, we can do it. I walked into Cal's practice about oh, three or four weeks ago, and I've, I've heard all the, the, the talk about Kentucky can't shoot the basketball. Right. I told Cal, I've been in this gym when you've had a team that can't shoot the ball. Mm -hmm. They can shoot the ball, and they had very good shot selection today with it. 
you got to have the confidence to take it. Obviously, yeah. Kyle's not a big three-point guy yeah. as a coach, so sometimes you can get shy away when coaches well, get Well, yeah, because normally he's got a couple yeah. – he's got five or six 6'11 six, guys, and he's like, just get it down low. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a Kentucky thing. Good yeah, but it's different. You know, but you may face a team that want to play you zone. I right. mean, you know, so you got to be able to make those shots. I like today the fact that they took the three-point shots. That's mm-hmm. more important, taking wide-open threes, because sometimes that's the best shot that you're going to get mm-hmm. in a half-court set is a wide-open three. Yeah, Kentucky had eight steals today. 36 to 13 points off turnovers in favor of Kentucky. Their, their defense and rebounding is going to win them. This team already looks ahead of where last year's Big Blue Nation team yeah. was early in the year. All right, down to the pavilion right now. Ole Miss has to get something going, whether it's rebound, playing a little defense, better than that. Put they find themselves Kennedy. down 10. He had might have to play in the second half. A player. Antoine Walker, Jimmy Dykes, Peter Burns with you. Will Wade. Happy Wademas. Uh, I think that's what they were calling it down there. Uh, it wasn't too happy. Fast forward to the final minute. Trump Waters pulls up from three. Got it. They got the lead with 18 seconds. Falling possession. Waters nearly comes up with the steal. Lumberjacks recover. Oh, no. Wide open. Go ahead and lay up. So LSU's got a chance. Waters, you think, may take a three here. Antoine, how about this pass, though? Great pass. Oh. Horrible Aaron finish. Epps misses the layup. <laughs> Lumberjacks win 83 to 82. We were all like, no! How did that happen? <laughs> LSU defeats Houston, guys. Um, you felt like it was such a big win. Yeah. You felt like after Waters hit the three there, something big was going to happen, yet they lose it. What, what do you mark that, uh, that loss to, Antoine? I mean, obviously, you, you hate to put it on one play and, and put that pressure on one player to think he lost the game. But I put it on the last three to four minutes, just execution down, down the stretch by LSU, charge calls, bad shots, not do, making the right defensive play, give up two threes late in the game where they should have been up, forcing the guys to drive. So it's a couple of plays down late the last three, four minutes. You don't want to just put it on that one play right there, even though it's easy to do that. But I think the last three, four minutes is where LSU I, lost the game at. I, they, they, they lost in the last three or four minutes? And they lost the first, in the first 20 20- 25, 25 seconds, seconds yeah. This team wasn't ready to play. Yeah. And you heard Epps talk about after the ball game. They, did, they didn't have their edge. And when Will Wade called timeout 25 seconds into the game, mm-hmm. it's not because he saw a play that bothered his attention. Yeah. He didn't like his pregame warm-up. He didn't like his locker room. He didn't like the field of practice the last two days. This is an LSU team that's not used to winning. They come off of a win. They didn't have an edge. And no. they'll go back and learn from it. They don't like noon kickoffs in Tiger Stadiums, and they probably don't <laughs> no, like noon tip-offs in, in no, the Maravich Assembly Center. Uh, all right, so they were hoping to bank a couple of W's before they get into conference play. Now you got three of them uh, before the new year. We'll see if they were able to bounce back. Credit, though, to Aaron Epps, who did miss that, that kind of bunny there at the end. Yep. He addressed the media, said, hey, that was on us. We didn't have the edge. So stand up young guy right there. I'll also credit Stephen F. Austin. No doubt. That's a darn good basketball team that's going to win their league, get in that NCAA tournament. I will see them Tuesday night at Mizzou Arena against the Tigers. I want to see more of this from Jordan Barnett in that second half. Ole Miss down 10. More coming up after the break. Welcome back to SEC Halftime Report. Georgia was down 19 at half, trying to chip away the deficit against the Minutemen of Massachusetts. Joan Parker trying to get something done. He can't hit the jumper, but Mike Edwards there for the putback. Well, this is a UMass team that's kind of in a rebuilding mode right now, but they ha- do have a good win against Providence. The problem with Georgia, do they have enough offense around Yonte Mate? He's going to get his. Who else can step up and help him? They need more of that. Dogs down 51-39 at that point. They are still down 14 with six minutes left to go in that game. Malik Yarborough for Illinois State right now putting on a show in the pavilion. He's got 10, and that is the difference in this game. Second half coming up after this break. Saturday afternoon, nine days until Christmas. Illinois State may feel like they're getting a Christmas present early if they pull this off in the second half, leading it by 10 over Ole Miss. Halftime at the Pavilion in Oxford alongside former Illinois shooting guard Sean Harrington. I'm Richard Cross. I I don't know if you can boil the half down to just one statistic. But you look at 6 of 11 from behind the arc for Illinois State, and Ole Miss goes 2 of 16 from deep. Yeah, huge key to this ballgame. Illinois State made threes early to get that lead going, and then Ole Miss was not able to get going from three, and they rely on that three so heavily. Hard for them to score points when they're not making them from beyond the arc. Two guys really stand out for Illinois State in the first half, one of them Malik Yarbrough. Yarbrough, difficult matchup for Ole Miss because he can put the ball on the floor, get to the rim, Right now, Ole Miss doesn't have anybody that can keep Yarbrough in front of him. The 
Andre Burnett, the only player in double figures for Ole Miss, had 10 in the first half, but he got those 10 points on three of 10 shooting. That came alive late in that first half to at least get Ole Miss back in striking distance. And that's what your senior needs to do is make some plays. One thing that really jumps out at, the, at you there is the rebounding numbers. Illinois State was minus 10 on average per game, and yet they out-rebound Ole Miss by nine in the first half. A huge stat to this ball game, you mentioned coming in, minus 10 on the boards. They flipped that here in the first half, gives them second chance opportunities, and they've limited to Ole Miss to not getting those second chance opportunities. Phil Fain and Malik Yarbrough combined for 19 points in the first half. Yarbrough had 12, Fain with seven in half number one. Illinois State basketball to start the second half. And maybe the most important stat for Illinois State, two fouls for Yarbrough and Fain. They both picked those up with 13 minutes to go in the first half. They still have those two fouls. So Dan Muller did a terrific job subbing them in and out. And those guys did a very good job of not picking up a ticky-tack foul and keeping them in this ball game. Evans missed the three. This is obviously an important game for Illinois State. And Sean, you made the point when they got those two fouls. A lot of times coaches will say, no negotiation. Sit down, you'll play in the second half because you can't afford to pick up a third. Well, Dan Muller did a really good job kind of walking the tightrope with those guys, and keeping them out of foul trouble. Excellent job. And, and having trust in his players that when he put them in there, they wouldn't pick up a cheap one. Tyree finds Mark Canvas Hyman down low. Ole Miss back within eight. Ole Miss started the ball game attacking inside. And Illinois State went zone, and they didn't attack it very well. This time it's Illinois State attacking inside. Phil Fain off the window. Fain's got nine. Good finish around the rim from Fain. Your Ole Miss now. Continue to attack inside, take threes as they come. It's such a big part of their offense. Kel Crawford fading away at the free throw line. Arbro into the lane, all the way inside. He got the roll and a chance for the three-point play. And this is why this is such a tough matchup for Ole Miss. They're not used to guarding a four man that can put the ball on the floor. You see Hyman doesn't pick him up until he gets to the elbow. That's too late, it's too deep. Yarbrough has a head of steam, able to blow by the defender and then takes the contact, finishes around the rim. Free throw good for Malik Yarbrough. Lead back out to 13 for Illinois State. Yarbrough had 30 last time out for Illinois State against Murray State. Today he's got 13 and Ole Miss turns it over. It's the first turnover for Ole Miss since the 11:47 mark of the first half. Now it goes against Bruce Stevens for Ole Miss, his first. Kennedy just looking for some kind of spark from this team. Right now, it is Illinois State who is the more aggressive team. Ole Miss tried to come away with the steal. Illinois State ends up with it. Well, what effort by the guys in the red jerseys. And finally, Fain draws the foul. Foul goes on Terrence Davis. And this is just terrific hustle all around. Two guys flying at the glass. Williams stays with it, gives his team another possession. Another attack inside a foul, and the bench absolutely loves it. I think Davis couldn't believe that foul went on him. See the replay, and like he or Fermanovic just could have been whistled. Davis has to go to the bench with those three fouls. He was in foul trouble in the first half as well. So it limited his minutes. Hard for him to get into a flow of this ball game. Right, Ole Miss has got to have more out of Terrence Davis. He had five points against Sam Houston State on Wednesday night. Tyree gets the bucket. He's got seven. 
Terrence Davis, only two points in the game tonight for the Rebels. Tough to score the basketball when we rely on his scoring. He's not giving it to you again. The fouls have basically taken him out of the flow of this game. Fane curls down the left side, left it short. Furmanovich is on the rebound. Tyree finds Crawford, who lost the handle, and then is called for a charge. I beg your pardon. These are the three guys we've talked about. Evans, well on his way to his average. Same thing for Fane. Same thing for Yarbrough. Well, if you're going to go on the road against a good team and pull out a victory, you need your stars to play like stars. And that's what we're seeing here this afternoon between the big three combo. They have all played well in this ball game. And Fane and Yarbrough doing that with two fouls early in the ball game. So rare to see that type of production when you're in foul trouble. I said charge a second ago on Crawford. That was not the case. It was a pushing foul that was called on Taylor Brunega, so Ole Miss kept the possession. Eight seconds on the shot clock here as Ole Miss inbounds. Stolen away by Hine. Quick hands trying to deflect the pass by Furmanovich. Just got the steal. Stevens with the rebound. Well, Illinois State had a mismatch yeah, there. Yeah, Vane had the mismatch and a good job of getting to that. Just couldn't finish inside. Nothing falling right now for Ole Miss on the offensive end. A couple stops in a row here now for Ole Miss. Need to take advantage of it on this end. DeAndre Burnett fouled on the drive. That's the fourth foul in less than four minutes on Illinois State. Matt Hine picks up his first. Fane and Evans coming off the floor. Dan Muller trying to get those guys a break here before the media timeout. A delay of game warning charged to Malik Yarbrough. And I think he said he stepped across the line on the throw in. Being aggressive, trying to defend that inbound pass. Tipped around inside. Yarbrough clears the rebound for Illinois State. And then goes coast to coast, draws the contact, and a chance once again for a three point play. Malik Yarbrough, last two games, unstoppable. Yeah, he's really starting to feel comfortable. 30 last game, and again, he's being picked up too late. The bigs of Ole Miss not used to guarding a four-man. That's going to bring the ball up in transition. So he's getting a full head of steam, getting into the lane before there's really a body on him. It's allowing him to get to the basket, and when the contact comes, he's already in the shooting motion. There's Davis, got a three. And Ole Miss needed that. Davis back into the game with those three fouls. And Kennedy's going to have to ride him here at this point. Can't worry about foul trouble. You need some offense. Yarbrough steps back. His three rims out. Burnett bumped on the drive by Matt Hine. 15 and a half to play, a 12-point lead for Illinois State. Hi, my name is Carlos Stillens. I'm from Marina Labby. Fitzing James Fax from Lime Y'all know that. My name is Dominico and you check up from Torrent Porn. And I want you to wish best of Shonda, especially if I go over the Roku. Hello, my name is Jesus Pernavich, I'm from Konas, Lithuania. Today I'm from Tom Kaleda, I'm from the United. Hello, I'm Ilya Tertichnik, here in Ukraine. This is Tobias from Mr. Tamar. Happy holidays from our Ole Miss family to yours. Yeah. So, 
One take. One take. They were proud of one take. I think they all said Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. 12-point lead for Illinois State. Tonight at 8.30 Eastern, we'll take you to Columbia for Missouri squaring off against North Florida. That game coming up for you right here on the SEC Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Got Busy a day of basketball today yeah. on the SEC Network. You got, got Auburn and Middle Tennessee later today as well. Yeah, great games ahead of us. And you're in the Kennedy. You got to get an interpreter on your staff. <laughs> figure out what everybody's saying in the locker room. A little international flavor on this Ole Miss roster. Latvia, Poland, Lithuania, and the Ukraine. Brian Tyree from the corner off the inbound. That's a big three that gets it back into single digits. Good execution out of the timeout, baseline out of bounds. And Tyree has knocked down a few shots here early in this second half, playing with some life. He's all over the ball right now as well. And Tyree's got 10 for Ole Miss. Yarbrough inside, and he's going to the free throw line again. Chance for the third time this half to finish off a three-point play. They get you in transition. This time, just posting up off the block. Defender goes for the steal. It allows the open lane for Yarbrough to get to the basket. It's a strong kid as well. When he gets into that lane, when he gets around the rim, he can absorb that contact. We've already mentioned that 7-2 wingspan. He uses that to shoot over to help the fence coming over. Bruce Stevens back into the game for Ole Miss. That's a big answer on the other end as well. Ole Miss knocks down the three out of the timeout. And then you get it right back. Ball was tipped away. The folks on the Illinois State bench thought that that ball was just thrown away. Well, eye contact there between Doug Schaus and KB Burdett. They agreed that it was tipped. So Ole Miss keeps the ball. Time it inside to Bruce Stevens. He's fouled but can't get the roll. Great ball movement that time against the zone. The touch pass from Hyman to Stevens. The touch pass was quick, so the defense couldn't rotate over. Bruce Stevens shooting 62% from the line this season. Makes the first. Stevens was the number six JUCO player in the country transferring in. Jones County Junior College here in Mississippi. And part of this game that really hasn't panned out so far is his ability to shoot it from the perimeter. He's only one of 11 this season. He has the reputation of being a pretty good shooter, and a lot of times when you get a junior college player, you really only get them for a year and a half. It's like a freshman. It takes a little while to adjust to the game. And Stevens has really started to play well here. Double figures in each of the last two ball games, having a good afternoon here as well. Turnover there by Illinois State. Keyshawn Evans back into the game. See Bruce Stevens there. Averaged 11 and a half points in the last two games. It's such a guard heavy offense for Ole Miss. Andy Kennedy looking for some of that inside scoring. Stevens has given it to him the last two games. Already has eight here this afternoon. Tyree tries another three. This one short. Terrence Davis trying to save it inbounds. Now Illinois State in transition. Williams for three. Madison Williams. That's an impressive play by Yarbrough. Not only because it's a four bringing the ball up the floor, but he's had a good game going. He could have forced that shot. Instead, gets his teammates involved. We've seen him finish at the rim a few times already in this ball game on similar plays like that. Instead, sees a wide open teammate. Madison Williams knocks it down. Williams having a very good afternoon. Madison Williams, nine points, all of them from behind the arc. Oh, 
think those numbers nearly 50% from the perimeter today for Illinois State. Marcanis Hyman gets the roll. Now this game just hanging in that 9 to 12 point range. Ole Miss hasn't really been able to cut deep into the lead. Stevens got a block down low. Just waiting for Ole Miss to make that run. How about the pass from Bruce Stevens? Just flipped it over to Hyman for the finger roll. And the shots are not falling for Ole Miss from the outside, so you can't keep settling. Last couple of possessions, we've seen them do a great job of running the offense through the bigs, getting a couple easy looks around the rim. Illinois State goes right back to Yarbrough. This time he's fouled and will go for free throws. This is getting the ball to the middle against the zone. A terrific touch pass, big to big, finish inside. Canvas Hyman, now three fouls in the game. Barbara has not only been good from the field, he's six of six from the free throw line. Stays perfect. Doing a good job of mixing up his game too, not just hanging around the perimeter, he's going down on the block. That time gets fouled, making a move around the rim. Picks up his third foul. The second half may take a while. Ole Miss is in the bonus with 12.56 to play, and Illinois State is one Rebel foul away from joining them. I really like the adjustment Andy Kennedy and Ole Miss have made here in the second half. Two of 16 from behind the arc in the first half. That's a big strength of this team. But they're going inside now. The offensive rebound for Bruce Stevens, a put back and a chance for three as he goes to the line. Taylor Brunigan picks up the foul. And these are absolute killers on the road. One on one situation, miss free throw, you give up the offensive rebound. Instead of getting away without a point on the possession, chance for a three point play. Stevens in double figures for the third straight game. He's got 11. This back within eight. Evans, tough entry pass. What a finish by Fain. Terrific body control and catch from Fain on the inside. Kept his balance. Quick off his feet. Davis lost the handle. Turnover by Ole Miss. The lob. Fain with the flush. That's a hard pass. Yarbrough made it look easy. It's like he's done that before. Those lob passes in transition, not always as easy as it looks. Baseline, Terrence Davis with a one-handed jam. Great feet inside. Davis goes up, make sure nobody can block that one. Seven points now for Davis. Illinois State will take a timeout. 11.49 to play. Illinois State leads it by 10. Highlight reel, Yarbrough to Phil Fain. Wednesday at 7 Eastern, we'll take you to Gainesville. Number 22, Florida. Mike White's Gators squaring off against James Madison right here on the SEC Network. Streaming live on the ESPN app. Look at that basketball team. I don't know that you want to play James Madison's football team right now. Semifinals coming up for them today. College Hoops here in Oxford, Mississippi. Ten-point lead for Illinois State out of the Missouri Valley. Over Ole Miss from the SEC. Richard Cross, Sean Harrington with you from the Pavilion at Ole Miss. Malik Yarbrough, huge game, Sean. 21 points, nine rebounds, perfect from the free throw line. He's got 11 in the second half. 
He's been terrific and just a very difficult matchup for Ole Miss right now. They are not used to seeing a four man bring the basketball up the floor and he's made excellent decisions. If he's got a step on his man, he's finishing at the rim. If he doesn't, he's finding open teammates. Right now he is a load for Ole Miss. Ole Miss tries to trap out of the 1-3-1. Williams straight on three, this time won't go. It's gonna be Ole Miss basketball. And it takes us to an official's timeout. 10-point game with 11.29 remaining. Back with you in Oxford, Mississippi. 10-point lead for Illinois State. On uh, this Saturday afternoon, Richard Cross, Sean Harrington. Dan Muller coaching at his alma mater, Illinois State. He was a good player there. Some of the guys around the country that back coaching at home. How about the big fella, Patrick Ewing back in D.C. at Georgetown. Jamie Dixon doing a good job at TCU. Chris Mullen at St. John's. And then Huggy Bear. Andy Kennedy was an assistant on Bob Huggins' staff at, uh, at Cincinnati. Bob Huggins back at West Virginia. A pretty talented list of players there and also now doing a very good job coaching at those schools. And Dan Muller has done a terrific job now in his sixth season. 18 or more wins in every year he's been there. In the last three years, they've finished third or better in the Missouri Valley Conference. So consistency been a big part of their success in normal. Dan Muller, no stranger to Ole Miss and Oxford. He spent 12 years on Kevin Stallings' staff at Vanderbilt. Hermanovich just keeps it alive. Schuler for three. He got it. Looks like a hot potato inside. Ends up in the hands of Schuler, and he gets Ole Miss back within seven. Close as they've been in a while. Fain inside. Miss. Might have been partially blocked, and then a foul on Fain. Just wrong place at the wrong time there. And Ole Miss finally able to get a three to fall. It was a scramble situation in the paint, so the defense was all sucked in when they kicked out the Schuler. He stepped into it. The freshman able to knock it down. He's had four games this year where he's hit multiple threes in the ball game. Ole Miss could use a few more from him here in the second half. Ole Miss was two of 16 from behind the arc in the first half. And it misses that free throw badly. Here in the second half, Rebels three of four from behind the arc. Yarbrough has his pocket picked by Schuler. A four on one break. Terrence Davis lays it in. Now the crowd's into it. Defense leads to offense. 1-3-1, one, one. gave Illinois State a little trouble that possession. First time in a while now Illinois State's felt a little pressure in this ball game with Ole Miss making a run. How did they respond? Yarbrough, that's how you respond. Shot clock winding down, feed it to him in the high post and let him go to work. That's the possession before, that's the 1-3-1. One, one. Quick hands from Schuler and then good. Job giving it to Davis on the break. This Rebels team very dangerous in transition. Kind of watching these big men for Illinois State, Phil Fain. Now has his third double-double of the season, six in his career. He's got 16 points and 10 rebounds. And Yarbrough is one rebound away from his first double-double of the season. And he's still perfect at the free throw line. Nine of nine today. Great answer from Illinois State. Crowd was into it. Momentum shifted to Ole Miss. Shot clock winding down. You get in the hands of Yarbrough. The free throw line, and he attacks to pick up a foul. Terrence Davis. Kind of contorted himself there, is able to get the layup. And that's a great dribble drive. Didn't settle for three, which he's done a little bit this year. Settling for threes that time. Good, strong finish getting into the lane. 
All tipped around. Ole Miss comes up with a steal. Tyree all the way inside. He's fouled on the way up. Almost 60% of the shots Davis takes are from beyond the arc. This time he does an excellent job of putting the ball on the deck, getting into the lane, finishing around the basket for an easy one. Madison Williams picks up his fourth foul, Bria Tyree. 61% free throw shooter, makes the first. Tyree's now got 11. Ole Miss with five players in double figures. It's a balanced attack for Ole Miss. The guard play has been terrific all season long, scoring the basketball. And we get some production from Stevens as well here this afternoon to go along with those guards. Ole Miss has cut it to four. Tinsley, a deep three. Harmanovich just ends up with it. He and Terrence Davis kind of fighting for the same basketball. Still with a lot of time in this ball game, we feel like this is an important one for Old Miss. They can make it a one possession game for the first time in a while. Bruce Stevens with a finger roll. It's a two point game and Dan Muller will take a timeout. Look inside. Tyree finds Stevens. It's an easy wall screen and roll. Really good afternoon for Stevens. That's 13. Gives Old Miss that scoring punch inside, what they really needed and been looking for. That's three straight games that Stevens has been in double figures. 10 points, 13 points, 13 points in the last three for Bruce Stevens. Ole Miss on a 12 to two run. They've cut it to two. And Muller saying be strong. They gotta be tough inside on both ends of the floor right now. For the first time in this ball game, a lot of pressure shifting over to the Redbirds. Wide open look for the elbow. Shot missed though by Hine, and then a foul on the rebound. That foul goes on Phil Fain. It's his fourth. And that's a tough foul for Illinois State. Four on Fain. He's played terrific. He's just trying to go up offensive rebound. You gotta be smart there, knowing if you have three, you can't go over to the top of somebody, put yourself in that position. Stevens. This is the first. Brunigan checks back in. And Muller did a really good job in the first half managing Phil Fain and Malik Yarbrough, who both got two early fouls in the game. He's now gonna. It was Fain having four down the stretch. Yeah, now with Fain and Yarborough out of the game, where's the offense going to come from? You haven't seen much from Evans here as of late. See if they can set him up. He can make a big play or a big shot for his team. Chance to tie the game there for Bruce Stevens. He missed them both. And Matt Hyde steps up and knocks out a huge three. That's a big confidence shot. He just flashed to the lane, the possession before, and missed one from 15. No hesitation there. Rises up and knocks in a three. Stevens doubled on the inside, and he's fouled. Foul goes to Brunega, and we go to a break. 7.58 remaining. Matt Hine trying to keep the Redbirds in the lead. He knocks down the big three. Tonight, the SEC Now team will have a full breakdown of the games of the day's hoop games. Hoops games, 10.30 Eastern coming up tonight. 
Nobody covers the SEC like we do. You can see it streaming live on the ESPN app. Imagine they'll work a little football conversation in as well. Coming up tonight on SEC Now. Illinois State leading by five over Ole Miss, 69-64. 17, their biggest lead of the game. How has Ole Miss gotten back into this game, Sean? Ole Miss has done a terrific job of taking better shots here in the second half. And two of 16 from beyond the arc in the first half. It wasn't falling. They need to make threes. Three of four here in the second half, so much better percentage. But they've gone inside. They've got easy baskets around the rim, and that's been the difference. They haven't had that lull here in the second half. Much better job getting easy buckets. Rebels got it to two a moment ago. Bruce Stevens at the free throw line had a chance to tie the game. Missed both free throws. Come down the floor, Illinois State hits a big, uh, gets a big three out of Matt Hine. Pushed it back out to a five-point ball game, but Stevens will be at the line coming out of this timeout. From a foul's standpoint, Phil Hines got four for Illinois State. Also, Madison Williams playing with four. For Ole Miss, Mark Canvas Hyman has four fouls. Stevens, three of five today from the free throw line. And one more note, Ole Miss will shoot two free throws for the rest of the way. Double bonus. These are big shots down the stretch here. Ole Miss has left seven points at the line already. Can't afford to miss anymore. Take advantage of those opportunities. You're in the double bonus. When you get there, you got to make them. Sean Evans, long three, shot an air ball. Ole Miss basketball trailing by three. Keyshawn Evans has had a quiet second half. Had 13 at the break, has been held scoreless in this second half. Illinois State needs him to step up, especially with Fain with four fouls. Redbirds need Evans to make some shots from the outside here to close out the ball game. Down low, Terrence Davis missed the dunk. Got his own rebound. Flips it over the rim. He just stayed with it. Give him an A for effort. One point game, Illinois State with the lead. Tinsley got a big three. Just a huge three from Tinsley. Not shooting a good percentage, under 20% coming in. Although, over three-fourths of the shots he takes comes from beyond the arc. Inside again to Davis. Fades away this time and got the roll. Two-point game. And Davis now being aggressive here in the second half. Attacking the rim, trying to take over this ball game on the offensive end for Ole Miss. Every time Ole Miss has gotten it close, Illinois State has gotten a big basket. This time they turn it over. Hensley nearly saved it back in. Crawford into the game for Ole Miss. Phil Fain in for Illinois State. Also Madison Williams coming back in. Stevens, he'll go to the free throw line for the second time in this second half with a chance to tie. If this is on Fain, and it is, that would be five. I think Fain wasn't initially sure if that foul was going to be called on him. Brunica checks in. Phil Fain's day is done. It's a big loss for a guy with a double-double. 16 and 10 today for Phil Fain. 
And he had to play most of the game in foul trouble. So you see those kinds of numbers. Being in foul trouble all game, very impressive. But give Old Miss a lot of credit. Bain just checked back into the ball game, and they went right inside to Stevens to try to pick up that fifth foul. First time today that this game has been tied. Six minutes to play. Ole Miss has battled back from a 17-point deficit. That will spread out at a 2-3. Fain out. Evans, Yarbrough need to be the guys to step up. A foul on the three-point shot. Madison Williams hit on the wrist by Markel Crawford. It's the unforgivable sin, right? And you just can't do it in that situation. You got all the momentum on your side. You've tied the ball game. That just needs to be a contested three. Instead, puts Williams on the line for three shots. Been interesting to kind of watch the reaction of the coaches to some of the calls today. I don't think Andy Kennedy thought there was a whole lot there. I think some of Dan Muller's frustration has been thinking that there was a lot there and he didn't get a whistle. Yeah, those are just one, that's the situation there. You just can't put yourself in that out in that situation. If you're out there on three, the ref standing right in front of you. You can't make contact at all with that shooter. Great job by Williams, knocking down all three of them. Illinois State from the free throw line, really good today. 18 of 21. Foul from behind on Brunega hits his fourth. No secret right now, apparently, what Ole Miss is trying to do, which is feed the post. And it's worked. It's been a very good adjustment here in the second half. Two of 16 from beyond the arc in the first half. This is a team that can make threes. They're making over eight and a half a game coming into this one, but it wasn't falling. Good adjustment. They wanted to go inside. They have the height. They have the size advantage. It gets Stevens a lot of credit. He has answered the call and have a very productive afternoon. Makes both free throws. Career high for Bruce Stevens, 19 points. He's nine of 11 from the line. And again, Ole Miss within one. Illinois State has led this game since their first possession. Three won't go, Terrence Davis rebound. Ole Miss with a chance to take the lead for the first time in the game. Brian Tyree puts it on the deck. Tough floater. Evans pulls down the rebound. And Muller wants his team to run. Get out before the defense can get set. It's been a while since we've called Malik Yarbrough's name. Really active start to the second half. He takes it all the way inside again. 25 points today for Malik Yarbrough. The redshirt junior from Zion, Illinois, a transfer from St. Louis University. He's been huge today for the Redbirds. A terrific afternoon. And that was a good job of pushing the basketball after a missed shot from Old Miss. Illinois State's gone a little quiet here on the offensive end. And that time, Dan Muller was urging his team to push it up the floor. Yarbrough did that, scored before the defense could get set. Point a minute man so far today from Malik Yarbrough. 30 in his last outing, 20 today. He's three assists away from a triple double. And the Illinois State blood runs in his family. His father, Dell, played at Illinois State and was a thousand point scorer for the Redbirds. Just an incredible afternoon here for Yarbrough. And it's starting to click for him. He had to sit out last year because of the transfer rule. You mentioned coming from St. Louis University, so sat out last year and had a very good season. But these last two games, 30 against Murray State. You just saw the stats there, 25 here this afternoon. Inside to Bruce Stevens. Stevens again, he's got 21. <laughs> Great 
Great job, Ole Miss not going away from the second half game plan. Continue to pound it inside where you have the advantage. Illinois State has to decide whether they're going to go double that to leave perimeter open or let Stevens try to get you back in it. Look at the three from Keyshawn Evans. First points of the second half for Evans, but he's got 16 in the game, including four threes. And he airballed his last one, so the comeback without hesitation to knock that one down shows the confidence he has in his shot. Terrence Davis fouled on the drive. That foul goes on Malik Yarbrough. It's his third. 347 to play. Might not want to miss the finish of this one. A four-point game in Oxford. Three forty-seven to play in Oxford, Mississippi. Illinois State out of the Missouri Valley, leading by four, eighty to seventy-six over Ole Miss. Time to take a look at today's good hands play, brought to you by Allstate. And who else? Malik Yarbrough leading the break. As his head up finds the teammate Phil Fain. Great lob and an excellent finish. One of eight assists in the game by Yarbrough. Fain is fouled out, but he was on the receiving end of that good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Yarbrough leads all scorers with 25 points. Evans has got 16, just hit a big three, his first points of the second half. Malik Yarbrough, two assists away from a triple-double. Phil Fain had a nice game today. You see him there on the bench after fouling out 16 and 10. Terrence Davis, couple of free throws here. He's got 15 points. 13 of them in the second half. And he's really stepped up his game here in the second half to lead the charge for Ole Miss. And for a guy that sometimes settles for a little too many threes, almost 60% of his shots come from beyond the arc. He's been in the attack mode here in the second half, trying to get to the rim. He's been successful. After the two free throws, again, a two-point game. down against Crawford and he's called for the charge. Fourth foul on Yarbrough. He had the smaller defender on him. Ole Miss went man that time. He showed a lot of zone here. And Tyree feeds it to Bruce Stevens, turns around, and he's headed to the free throw line again. I think because of the foul situation, Illinois State's kind of had to sag in the middle, and Ole Miss has just continued to feed the ball inside to Bruce Stevens. And second player of the game for the Redbirds fouls out. And Ole Miss has the advantage inside. When you look at height and size, now with Brunega and Fain both falling out. Illinois State running out of options. And how to play Stevens inside, and Ole Miss continues to find him. Richard Cross, Sean Harrington with you. 321 to play. It's not like Bruce Stevens, Sean, has been setting up on the block. He's flashing into the middle of the lane and catching it right there at the arc. He's done a good job being active inside, making himself available. And give Old Miss and their guards a lot of credit. Not settling for threes here in the second half. Getting it inside to the hot hand, it's Ben Stevens. Near turnover. A player control foul. Called on Malik Yarbrough. That is his fifth foul. He is the third Indiana State player to foul out. He finishes two assists shy of a triple-double. This is a tough play here. Just trying to save a possession for your team. In that case, it's almost better to just hang on to the ball, take the turnover. Yarbrough disappointed as he goes off the floor. 
frustrated as well. Off for a push on Markel Crawford. What a game today by Malik Yarbrough. Markel Crawford, a chance to give Ole Miss its first lead of the ball game. But not yet. Now with three minutes to play, where's the offense going to come from here at Illinois State? And also the defense with all three of their inside players fouling out. Huge advantage for Ole Miss on the inside. First lead of the game for the Rebels comes with three minutes to play. Tinsley tries a three, it's short, and Crawford pulls down the rebound. So we got to have really good offensive possessions if you're Illinois State. Likely only going to get one shot because of the Absolutely. rebounding situation. Not going to be anybody crashing the boards. Want to get ball and body movement. You're the smaller team, you got to play quicker here. Stevens kicks it out. Terrence Davis lost the handle, gets it back. Tyree, deep three. Fourteen for Brian Tyree. Free throws coming here for Keyshawn Evans. You can feel the momentum shift. Tyree stepping into a three. Shoots it with confidence. Ole Miss has five players in double figures. They're led by Bruce Stevens with 23. Davis has got 17. Tyree, 14. 11 for Marcanvis Hyman and 10 for DeAndre Burnett. If Illinois State is going to find a way to win this game, it feels like Keyshawn Evans is going to play a big role in it happening. He's going to have to score here down the stretch, and more importantly, somehow this team's going to have to get stops on the defensive end. Very, very small lineup on the floor. Only Tinsley at 6'6". Nobody else under 6'6 on the floor. Tyree dumps it into Bruce Stevens. And again, it's a mismatch. You've got Evans who's trying to body up Bruce Stevens in the post. Bruce Stevens at 6'8, 252. Keyshawn Evans at 6 foot 180. You just got to fly around if you're Illinois State on that defensive end. Try to cause some havoc. Try to make Old Miss. Make a tough decision. Right now, there's nobody on the floor that can body up against Stevens. Stevens makes one of two. He's got 18 points in this second half. One possession game for Illinois State. A block by Tyree, trailing Matt Hine on the play. Hine went down hard. He landed very hard. Some body contact there. Landed right on his hip. That's a tough no call for Matt Hine. Isaac Gassman got a big three. Gassman, the red shirt freshman from Ottawa, Illinois, into the game because of the foul situation, ties this game at 85. And that is the definition of stepping up when your number is called. Brian Tyree all the way inside, missed the layup, and then Bruce Stevens called for an over-the-back foul. Not only is that a great stop for Illinois State, but the over-the-back allows Keyshawn Evans to go to the line to shoot free throws. Chance for Illinois State to retake the lead. You're just joining us. Three Redbirds have fouled out in this game. 25 points for Malik Yarbrough, 16 points for Phil Fain. And also Taylor Brunig, a third post player for Illinois State, has fouled out of this game. This isn't the 6-6 and under league. This is actually 
Division I, but with all the foul trouble, Illinois State having to go extremely small. And outside of Stevens, Ole Miss trying to match up against that smaller team. Keyshawn Evans with two clutch free throws for Illinois State. And then Brian Tyree just dribbles it off his leg. Timeout taken by Illinois State. A bad turnover for Ole Miss with a minute 12 to play. You just got to be stronger than, with the ball than that. Can't turn the basketball over there late in a ball game. Have to value the possession of the ball, especially when you have a situation with Bruce Stevens on the inside and nobody on Illinois State that can guard him in the lane because of the foul situation. Stevens needs to get a look inside each possession down here and see how Illinois State's going to guard that. Ole Miss led this game 84-80. Their biggest lead, a four-point advantage. With the two best players on the floor today for Illinois State out of the game on the bench. Since then, Gasman off the bench has hit a three. And Evans has got four free throws for Illinois State. The Redbirds have outscored Ole Miss seven to one to retake the lead. Just an incredible answer from the Redbirds. And they went down four. You could feel the momentum shift. And almost the air came out from Illinois State with a terrific response. And now they have the basketball with the lead. If you're Isaac Gasman, at some point do you say, put me in, coach? He's five of seven from behind the arc on the season. That's a huge three. His number being called because of the foul situation. Now you want to run the clock a little bit here. Your Illinois State try to score late in the shot clock. Most importantly, you cannot turn the basketball over to give Ole Miss a run out. Shot clock at 10. Evans all the way inside, overshot it, missed it badly. Terrence Davis. See if Ole Miss takes its time. You certainly can play two for one here, trailing by two. Burnett. Knocked down on the drive. That's not the guy you want to foul. Not the guy you want to foul for Illinois State. And works out really well for Ole Miss. Clock management. Almost a nine-second difference. Shot clock and game clock. You can make these free throws. You're looking to get a stop and then have the possession to end the ball game. DeAndre Burnett at the free throw line. Now a one-point game. He's 4-4 from the line. Burnett, an 87% free throw shooter on the year. Excuse me, 83% coming into this game. We are tied once again. 38.8 seconds remaining. Illinois State's out of timeouts. Ole Miss has one remaining. How do you approach this if you're Illinois State? You want to run the clock down. You want to shorten this game here as much as you can. Try to score late in the shot clock. But more importantly, you have to have terrific balance back on defense. If you do not score, you don't want to give Ole Miss a run out. Options limited for Illinois State. Three players having fouled out. And you look at the production, 43 points. 21 rebounds unavailable in this final couple of minutes. So where's the offense going to come from? You want the ball in Evans' hands. See if you can spread the floor, spread the defense, late in the shot clock, get him going into the lane, and maybe he can kick out to a shooter that's spotted up if you can draw the defense in. I'll tell you one place Illinois State today has been clutch is at the free throw line. 88% for the game, and in this second half, they are 15 of 16 from the line. Game inside 30 seconds, tied at 87. Spread the floor, see if you can get into the lane and kick if the shooter becomes available on the help situation. Evans trying to go by Farmanovichus, kicks to the corner, Hine for three. Rebound to Ole Miss. Shot clock off. Ole Miss turns it over. No, it was touched last by Illinois State. 
Terrence Davis chose to be aggressive with that pass ahead with plenty of time to play looking for the easy bucket. He had his teammate flying down the floor. Risky pass. Very lucky that, that ball was saved and off of an Illinois State player. Take a look at this in transition. Off the miss. And Crawford doesn't throw that off. Hine, it is a turnover going the other way. Ole Miss using its final timeout. The other thing is, if Crawford doesn't climb the backboard there, at least the post that holds up the backboard, that ball might hit his leg as it comes back into play. Just a great heads up play to keep that alive. Now if you're Ole Miss, your clear advantage is Stevens on the inside, on a baseline out of bounds. You want to get him with a screen going towards the basket or just a post up, give him a lob and force Illinois State to either foul or he's going to have a pretty good look at the basket with a much smaller defender on him. Illinois State has led by as much as 17 in this game. They've added four tenths of a second to the clock. So 6.4 instead of six even here for Ole Miss. This game being played because Dan Muller sent that tweet out after Illinois State was left out of the NCAA tournament a year ago, pleading for a Power Five or Big East team to play a home at home with Illinois State. Andy Kennedy agreed to do so. It's been an entertaining afternoon here at Oxford. Stevens is where Ole Miss would like to go because of the mismatch. Into Terrence Davis, has his shot blocked out of bounds. 3.8 remaining. They're going to look to see who this went off of. Where does the ball go? Doug Shaw's the crew chief. We'll take a look as well. Only State was calling for it right away to review. Did that ball hit off the forearm of Terrence Davis after it was blocked? And it could be the follow through of Davis as well. Right there, is he throwing the ball forward? That's going to be Illinois State basketball. I believe they're going to switch this call. You're right, you got the immediate reaction from three different Illinois State players saying, review it, review it, review it. Great job, multiple yeah. looks there by our guys with the cameras today. So we expect that this call is going to be overturned and it's going to be Illinois State basketball. In which case, they've got 3.8 seconds. Mm -hmm. Keyshawn Evans is your guy, right? Uh, yeah, and with, with 3.8 seconds, you can probably get three dribbles when you start talking about clock management. Now, the question also is, is there enough evidence to overturn this? Is it clear enough that it was off of Davis? That would be the other question. Well, you tell me. You just watched it. Is it clear enough for you? I think it is. And you look at the follow through. His momentum going that direction is the direction of where the basketball is going. Because it, it was blocked, the ball was blocked back into the hands and almost the forearm Correct. And of his, Terrence his Davis. His momentum going forward, I believe, is enough to show the direction of the basketball going that way off of Davis. One thing that works to the benefit, really, of both teams right now, they were both out of timeouts. And so you got Illinois State, who likely is going to have possession here with an opportunity to draw up a play where you got to come the full length of the floor. Yeah, and you got to be drawing up a play for both ends right now. Defensively, how are we going to guard it if it's not our basketball? And how are we going to score or take advantage of an opportunity if it is our basketball? And if it is Illinois State, again, 3.8 seconds. You probably have enough for at least two, maybe three dribbles. If you can get your momentum going the other direction. And if it stays with Old Miss, you want to continue going inside. And there's the call. It is going to go to Illinois State. 
the one, officials credit. You and I looked absolutely. at it. It looked immediately like yep. it was. But you got to make sure a tie ball game, 3.8 seconds. They took their time. Yep. Looked at all the different angles, but they got it right. Huge play. And you want to get Evans on the move here, going towards the basket. You'll have two or three dribbles here. Evans catches it about 75 feet away. He's going to get a decent look from three for the win. Overtime in Oxford, Mississippi. It's a pretty good look that Keyshawn Evans got. You can't ask for much more if you're Illinois State. Very good job drawing up the play and excellent clock management from Keyshawn Evans. But it doesn't fall. We got extra basketball. Seven apiece, a little bonus basketball from the pavilion at Ole Miss, Oxford, Mississippi, on this Saturday afternoon alongside Sean Harrington, Richard Cross. Glad to have you on the SEC Network. Illinois State led by as much as 87. Three Redbirds have fouled out of this ball game, but still they found a way to get it to overtime. Yeah, they got the overtime, and now that they have enough bodies to compete here for five minutes with Ole Miss. If you're Ole Miss right now, you have to continue to pound it inside to Stevens. Playing with a clear advantage on the inside here for overtime. Fourth meeting all time between these two teams. 3-0 the series lead for Illinois State. Bruce Stevens jumps for Ole Miss, Tinsley for Illinois State. The Redbirds will have the first possession of the overtime period. You're essentially playing with five guards now here. If you're Illinois State, you got to spread the floor, get the ball moving, body movement, try to get that defense shifting. A big three to start the overtime. Keyshawn Evans, 23 in the game. Huge shot from Evans to give Illinois State some momentum and some confidence here early going in overtime. Free and Tyree. A miss and a foul on Bruce Stevens. Third foul on Bruce Stevens. And Stevens needs a touch every offensive possession here. That possession he had, Hine and Evans guarding him. Hine started on him, who's 6'3". Evans listed as six foot. That might be a little generous, but he has to get a touch inside. He's had a terrific afternoon. Neither of these teams strangers to overtime this season. Glassman misses the first. Illinois State lost in overtime to Charleston Southern, 64-62. That was a home game. Ole Miss has been to overtime twice. They're 0-2. Against South Dakota State, they were down 20 at the half. Ended up losing in overtime. Led by 10 at the half against Virginia Tech. This game, down 18 in the first half to force this overtime period. One of two for Glassman. Four-point lead. Burnett fouled on the way up. William Tinsley picks up his third foul. Burnett using that strong body once he gets by his defender. Hard to catch up. He keeps you on his hip. That time draws contact on the drive. DeAndre Burnett's now got 13. He's a perfect six of six from the free throw line. Defender fly by, and he was able to just kiss it off the glass. And that's miscommunication from Ole Miss off of a made free throw. They wanted to set up a little bit of full court pressure, and nobody on the sideline. One easy pass to a layup. Markel Crawford, an open look for three, rims out, taken away by Terrence Davis, and a jump ball. 
The possession arrow will favor Ole Miss here in overtime. There's one pass up the sideline. There's just no defense there. You got to communicate better off of a made free throw. Can't give up a layup. Devontae Schuler inside to Stevens. Blocking foul inside. Stevens wants to count the basket. We will count the basket, they say. If you're watching the NBA, there's no question you count the basket. Little surprised to see that at this level. Yeah, this is clearly a continuation. There's the bump there, and then he gathers and goes. That's an NBA continuation. That's usually not the call in college basketball. Three thirty-four remaining. Monster game today for Bruce Stevens. Twenty-six points for the junior college transfer, and now it's a one-point game. That's why Stevens has to get a touch every possession down. At least make Illinois State either follow him or double down. They have nobody left that can guard him on the inside. Well, Ole Miss Miss's last possession regulation, they chose to go to Terrence Davis as opposed to Bruce Stevens. Davis nearly comes up with a steal. Ten on the shot clock. Five to shoot. Evans kicks to the corner. Hine got a three. What a possession. Illinois State scrambling to get the loose ball. And then Evans finds Hine in the corner. DeAndre Burnett with the answer. Huge shot from Burnett coming down in transition. This game. Evans pulls up for three. Not a bad look for Evans. Burnett on the drive. Terrence Davis for three. Shot an air ball. And to your point again, Shaw, well, you got Bruce Stevens on the bench right now, getting him a rest. This three won't go. Glassman pulls down the offensive board, lays it up and in. Isaac Gassman wouldn't be playing right now if not for three foul outs in the game. He's got six points off the bench. Huge, huge six points from Gassman, making some big plays for the Redbirds. Late in regulation and now here in overtime. Timeout Ole Miss with three, a three-point game with two minutes to play. It's Ole Miss's only timeout here in overtime. We're with you from the Pavilion at Ole Miss, Oxford, Mississippi. Richard Cross, Sean Harrington, the rest of our SEC Network crew. With the offensive rebound for Gasman. Just a great hustle play. Getting to the loose ball and then finishing at the rim. Illinois State needs all the hustle plays to go their way here in overtime. They're going to pull out a victory on the road. I, I think both coaches would point to a lot of things that they didn't like in this game. But you can't help but talk about the gutsiness, really, of both of these teams. Ole Miss to come back from an 18-point deficit. And then Illinois State, with two of its best players fouled out, with a couple, about five minutes remaining in regulation, to put it into overtime, to have a three-point lead with two minutes left in overtime. Yeah, a lot of positives to take away from this ball game right now for both teams. You just mentioned it. Old Miss was down and out, and just a great effort to come back to get in overtime. And this is going to go a long way for Illinois State playing a really gutsy game on the road against a very good team. You mentioned the foul trouble has been an issue all afternoon, and they're finding a way to score baskets. Dan, yeah. Dan Muller against SEC teams. He's now in his sixth year at Illinois State. It's two and one. They played Kentucky and lost. They've got to win this year against South Carolina, trying to knock off their second SEC team of this season. And also a win in his tenure against Texas A&M. 
Muller coached in the SEC. He was an assistant at Vanderbilt for 12 years under Kevin Stallings. And they played a difficult schedule. You look at the winning percentage of their opponents this year, third most best winning percentage in the country by opponents for Illinois State. Yeah, you look and see that they're four and six, and you think they're having a tough year. But when you then break it down and see who those losses are to, they played a very difficult schedule in non-conference. Dan Muller really challenging his guys. Boise State, one of those losses. BYU on the road, very tough place to play. Nevada, terrific team this year as well. Davis puts it on the deck, drives inside, but left the layup short. He was expecting contract, contact, and Gassman just kind of stepped out of the way at the last minute. Davis lost his balance. Illinois State with the ball and a three-point lead. Keyshawn Evans guarded by Terrence Davis. Tough shot on the baseline and a foul on Terrence Davis. That's the fourth on Terrence Davis. Keyshawn Evans goes back to the free throw line where he's six of seven today. And Evans knows. Yeah, no Yarbrough, no Fane. He needs to take over this game. And he's wanted the ball in his hands. The end of regulation also here in overtime, looking to make plays. Evans could hit the century mark for Illinois with a make here. It's been five years since Illinois State scored 100 points. Last time, November 12th, 2012, against UC Santa Barbara. Will 100 be enough today? Burnett turned it over. He's trying to flip it to Bruce Stevens in traffic. Great heads-up play by Evans. Illinois State had some numbers. But with a five-point lead now, you have to play time score momentum. I'm run this clock down as much as you can to shorten the possessions of this ball game. Shot clock inside 10. Here comes Evans. Pulls up for a deep three. Rims out. That so Ole Miss. That would have been a dagger there. Burnett gets all the way inside, banks it up, and back to a one possession game. I think they're just checking the clock here, maybe. Looked like the clock kept moving after the bucket. Burnett continues to attack inside. Stopped at 47.7, but the officials put point, 48.4, so seven tenths back up there. Could be big in both directions, especially if you're the team trailing. And decision time if you're Ole Miss. Just a one possession game. Plenty of time that you will get the ball back. You play it straight up, or do you foul? Looks like they're going to try to play it straight up. If you're Illinois State, you want to bleed this clock all the way down, take a shot late in the clock, and have good defensive balance back to not give up any quick points to Ole Miss. Evans being guarded by Terrence Davis out around half court. I want to pick up a foul here if you're Davis late in the shot clock. Cross court pass into the corner. Hine has his three blocked. It's saved in by Gassman. Hine gets it back. Shot clock at two, at one. Tough shot. And an offensive rebound for Matt Hine. There a foul. Well, you want to talk about a possession working out in favor of Illinois State. Terrence Davis called for the foul. That's his fifth. And just scrambling all over the floor. This is a great defensive block. And now the ball just starts being thrown around. Evans doesn't realize the shot clock doesn't reset until late. Throws it up there. Great effort by Hine. 12.7 seconds remaining. And now Illinois State, an opportunity to make this a two-possession game. Hines got six points today, but he missed the first free throw. Matt Hine this season 
has only taken six free throws prior to that one. He's made three of six. This next free throw will be the biggest of the year for Matt Hine. Is it pressure? Free throws, hard to simulate in practice. You can go to the line, do your routine as much as you want, practice in your free throw form. Hard to put this kind of pressure on you when you're in the gym alone shooting. Big shot here coming up for Hine. Matt Hine from your neck of the woods. Red shirt sophomore from Windermere, Florida. Played at Windermere Prep. Averages only two points a ball game. But right now, all eyes on Matt Hine. He's got six points today, a couple of made threes. Really important here, whether you make or miss on this free throw at Illinois State, you have to match up. Make sure you don't give up anything easy on the other end. You want to try to take as much time as possible off the clock before Ole Miss scores. Your Ole Miss, this is plenty of time. Go down, get a quick basket. You so don't need a three. Hine makes one of two. It's a four-point game. Attack the rim here. More than likely, Illinois State's going to let you go. Burnett tries a three instead. It's an air ball. May have been partially blocked. And now it's just going to be run out. Illinois State will escape with a win, 101-97. They have one point led by 18. They trailed it by four. Their two best players fouled out, and Dan Muller's team wins. Just an absolute huge win for this Illinois State program to come on the road and get a victory against an SEC team and to do it with two of your top three leading scorers falling out. Gutsy, gutsy win by the Redbirds. Illinois State now 5-6. and six. Ole Miss falls to 5-5. Five and five. For Sean Harrington and our entire SEC Network crew, I'm Richard Cross. 101-97, Illinois State over Ole Miss. SEC now coming up next. Good night from Oxford, Mississippi.